602, we are learning more about the sequence of events that led up to the death of Australian bride-to-be Justine Damon. It turns out Damon called Minneapolis police twice to report a possible sexual assault. Melissa Colorado is in the newsroom now with more on these revelations. Hi. Good morning, guys. Here's what we know. Justine Damon, she heard noises coming from the back of her house that worried her. She feared a woman was being sexually assaulted, and that's why she called police for help. Now, Justine Damon called police at 1127 last Saturday night. She tells the operator, I think she tried to say help, and it sounds distressed. The operator then tells Justine, okay, I've already got an officer on the way. Eight minutes later, Damon calls again. She tells the operator she's heard the woman screaming and she's worried the police got the address wrong. Moments later, officers Muhammad Noor and Matthew Harity arrive on scene. According to Harity, the two hear a loud noise. Justine approaches their car and Noor shoots her through the driver's side window. Justine is pronounced dead. 20 minutes later, Governor Mark Dayton spoke to reporters yesterday calling Justine's death a horrible tragedy. I have deep regrets any time I see Minnesota portrayed in, in, in less than a, a very positive light. My, my greatest concern is for the individual who, um, Justine Damon, and, um, and for her family who have suffered this grievous loss. And when asked about the fact that the, that the officers involved did not have their body cameras on, Governor Dayton said the legislature should definitely review the policies on body cameras. And coming up at 630, you'll hear what the governor has to say about police training and if that, too, needs to be reviewed. Kim. Thank you, Melissa. This case has brought media attention from all over the world right here to the Twin Cities. Australian reporter Alexis Dash was on a plane right after the news broke in Damon's home country. Dash came halfway around the world to report on something that's rare in Australia. So people in Australia just don't get shot by police. It's maybe happened once or twice. The key difference is that guns are not rampant or they're not as rampant as they are here. It's very unusual for some, someone to have a gun in Australia and if they do, they've probably got it illegally unless they're a farmer. Story remains on front pages of newspapers all over Australia. The country's prime minister called the shooting quote completely inexplicable. Malcolm Turnbull says Australian authorities are expecting answers from Minneapolis police. Well first he lived through hell as a Vietnam prisoner of war. Then he battled melanoma and now Arizona Senator John McCain is preparing to fight brain cancer. Doctors say Senator McCain is in for the fight of his life. Glioblastoma is the most aggressive type of tumor because it arises directly in the brain tissue. Some say this may explain the senator's unusual questioning of former FBI Director James Comey last month. The 80-year-old McCain and his family are reviewing the next steps in treatment, including chemotherapy and radiation. McCain's doctors say he's recovering from his surgery amazingly well and that his underlying health is otherwise excellent. Colleagues are calling the one-time Republican candidate for president a hero, a patriot, and a fighter. God knows how this ends, not me, but I do know this. This disease has never had a more worthy opponent. This is the same type of cancer that killed Ted Kennedy and Bo Biden, the son of former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, less than 24 hours ago, President Trump was talking about moving on from the failed GOP health plan and letting Obamacare die. Well, now a head snapping turnaround. The president now says he wants senators to repeal and replace Obamacare ordering GOP senators to perform CPR, if you will, on a bill many fear could be beyond saving. Are you experiencing some political whiplash here? <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious we've had difficulty in getting 50 votes uh, to proceed. But what I want to disabuse any of you of is the notion that we will not have that vote next week. Senate leadership leaving the door open to either repeal only or to repeal and replace in that vote next week. New cost estimates underscore the difficulty of their task. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, repealing Obamacare alone would cause 17 million fewer people to have insurance coverage within a year. And by 2026, premiums would double. Next week, President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner will be interviewed by staff of the Senate Intelligence Committee. It's a closed session. Trump's oldest son, Donald Trump Jr., and former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort set to testify at a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. All three attended a meeting last year that involved, among others, a Russian lawyer 
and it was pitched with the promise of damaging information about Hillary Clinton. As the president's family members prepare to testify, the president opens up to the New York Times, and we have details on that unfiltered interview that's coming up at 6.30. Alicia? Well, if you're looking at, you are currently looking at video of an interview Nicholas Westlake did with Care Levin back in 2013. Westlake was a ballroom dancer and an instructor at Dancer Studio in St. Paul. He died earlier this week after a Metro light rail train crashed into this car. Now, his girlfriend, Nellie Petkova, was also in the car, but she was not seriously hurt. The accident, it happened Saturday night at the intersection of Eustis and University in St. Paul. Witnesses reported Westlake had a green light when the crash occurred, though investigators are still reviewing video of the crash to determine who was at fault. But I'm hoping they find their answer so that there can either be some justice or some closure, or there can then be steps put in place to make sure this doesn't happen again. Police say the train operator is a 12-year employee of Metro Transit. He is currently on standard administrative leave. There have been more than a dozen deaths connected with the light rail since it first opened back in 2004. Tim. Thank you, Alicia. No one knows just how long Bartolo's career will last. Two days after making his twins Perry debut, an ESPN report indicates the 44-year-old Cologne may retire if his road start against the L.A. Dodgers doesn't go well. However, another report, this one by MLB.com, says Cologne isn't yet thinking about retirement. The twins will take at least one more chance on Cologne, a veteran of 12 teams in 20 seasons. While he's a relative spring chicken compared to Bartolo Colon, new T-Wolves player Jamal Crawford is definitely an NBA veteran, and yet at 37, Crawford's services are still highly valued. So much so, the Golden State Warriors and Cleveland Cavaliers were both reportedly seeking Crawford's services. But Jamal chose the T-Wolves, saying he's excited by what Tom Thibodeau and company are building here. Well, athletes posting videos of themselves doing box jumps is nothing new, but doing a rotational box jump? Well, that is new T-Wolves swingman Jimmy Butler repping 48-inch jumps. That's four feet, folks, with a twist earlier this week. How high is this table right now? It's about what, three and a half feet. 48-inch vertical jumps with a twist. Uh, he's, a, he's a professional athlete. Do not try this at home. Sven, no. would you try that? Well, leg day? All, is today leg day? First of all, his legs <laughs> I wouldn't do are, more than two feet. His legs are as long as I am, so I, I don't think it's an unfair advantage. It is actually leg day, though, by the way. Is well, it? there you Separate, go. No, I'm not going to. Now you know. You can jump try. on Tim's shoulders. <laughs> that would be bad for both of us, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't end well. Look at that sunrise. Huh? Wow. You see it? Oh, Looks now we, fake. When I, as soon as I refer to it, we take it away. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Ask and thou shalt receive. A little you know hazy, kind of foggy out there this morning. We've been seeing some smoke from the Canadian wildfires working, making for some pretty sunrises. Uh, uh, some clouds moving through and out of here. We're going to see some sunshine, drier weather. Upper 80s today could be near 90 again, but a break from the rain. That'll be nice. And uh, your morning commute, uh, we had one early on crash along Highway 77 that has since cleared, but we do have a stalled vehicle on 94 eastbound at Huron Street. As you see, not bugging anybody at this point. Across the metro, not seeing any slowdowns just yet. So I'll have another update here in just a few minutes. All right. We have more coming your way. An epic DIY fail. The Pinterest project that ended with one family's house in flames. And they're all the rage. Oh. Those fidget spinners the kids just can't put down. But now new concerns about their safety being raised this morning. Plus, Circus Juventus has a new show opening next week. And this morning, some of their performers are giving us just a taste of what audiences can expect this summer. That's strength.